So welcome to another session of DevLive here at Oracle Open World 2017. I'm your host, Javed Mohammed, and I have as my guest today, De Deepak Goel. Deepak, welcome. Thank you. And your title is? Senior Director of Product Development, Blockchain. Se so Senior Director of Product Development. So we're going to be talking about blockchain today. Mm -hmm. Let's just start off just for the benefit of some of the folks who may not have heard about blockchain. I guess what, it's a distributed way of doing creative things from, I don't know, finances to a whole bunch of things. Probably I'm d stumbling all around. Can you give us perhaps a better articulation of what blockchain is? Sure, sure, sure. Blockchain can solve all the problem of the world. Of the world, okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll vote for president for you. All <laughs> I got one vote. Uh -huh. <laughs> so uh, we have to look at like how transactions are done today actually in uh -huh. the enterprise world. Uh -huh. If two organizations are talking to each other, what they are doing is they are going into the central system, central database of a organization, and making transactions over there. And each organization has their own source of the truth. Over a period of time, these databases can go out of sync. So the problem is that uh, these organizations would have to go to uh, get together offline and reconcile and make sure that they have the same information in their databases. So that's one problem. Second problem is most of the time these organizations, because they don't trust each other, they go through an intermediary. So they are trusting the intermediary and this other organization is also trusting that and they are saying that, okay, you do the transaction and all this handshake on behalf of us. Mm -hmm. That takes uh, a lot of time because the, all the transactions first have to go to intermediaries from both directions and reconciliation and settlement. For example, the stock trading, right? So it takes three days for us to settle the stock. And probably even a, a, mo a more simpler example is probably just a regular bank transaction, and that's why kind of bit Bitcoin kind of comes Bitcoin, in, right? Bitcoin, right, so yeah. So every time like you talk about uh, blockchain, the first thing that comes to mind is Bitcoin. Bitcoin. But let me actually clarify that Bitcoin is just one application of blockchain. Got it. Blockchain has huge potential actually to change mm -hmm. all the transaction that goes on mm -hmm. between organization. So what blockchain does is it's basically also known as a distributed laser technology. A distributed? Distributed ledger. A distributed ledger. Ledger technology, right? Uh -huh. So like everyone has their own ledger, but they have the same information, exactly the same information in their ledger. Okay. So what's happening here is like when I do a transaction, I create the transaction, this other organization which I am transacting with, they also execute the same transaction and the up update is made to the ledger at the same time. Okay. And in order to uh, an update to be made to the ledger, a consensus among these uh, transacting parties had to be achieved. So there is a, a concept of consensus among these parties that comes to the picture. Okay. But at the very basic level, it's a way of uh, storing the distributed ledger, distributed information, and doing the distributed transaction across many cross-departmental, cross-organizations business process. Okay. So that's what you're doing. Some other example you can say is uh, supply chain, for example. You want to understand like from where your food is coming. So there are so many components, so many places the food might have been, uh -huh. and how it was transported and all that. So using the block ledger, blockchain ledgers, this all this information can be tracked. And uh, one other benefit of block ledger is once the information gets into the ledger, it cannot be repudiated. It cannot be? It cannot repudi be repudiated, okay. right? It's immutable. Got so it. no one can change it. So if even if like by mistake an organization makes a bad entry into the ledger, it cannot you be changed. You can't cover it you up. You can't cover it up. <laughs> <laughs> there cannot be Anyone any watching out there? <laughs> All right. Okay, so that's, I mean, obviously the, the number of uses of it just based upon your explanation is very multifaceted. Mm -hmm. And as you said, it can solve Maybe not world peace, but probably a lot of other issues. So tell us how Oracle kind of plays into blockchain. What's, what's its plan? How does it fit in? Uh, what's, what's the roadmap look like? Sure, sure, sure. So let's look at like what Oracle is. Oracle serves the enterprise customers. Uh -huh. We have 430,000 customers. And most of these are enterprise customers who are running the mission critical business application uh -huh. on Oracle stack. So these enterprise customers have unique requirements as from any technology that they want to use. Mm -hmm. Their requirements are like scalability, reliability, they want the performance. Security. And security is actually uh -huh. of the topmost. Blockchain actually solves some of them. Uh -huh. So what we are doing is we are creating a blockchain cloud service on Oracle Cloud, and we are making it enterprise grade. 
Okay. If you go actually in the open source and all that, you will find a number of uh, blockchain implementation, but none of them really cater to the enterprise needs as such. Okay. So that's what we are doing here. So that's one thing. Mm -hmm. Second thing is uh, Oracle has a very unique uh, position with respect to application. Oracle has a very comprehensive suite of uh, apps like HCM and Fusion ERP and mm -hmm. uh, supply chain and uh -huh. healthcare and whatnot, all those suites. What's happening is today, uh, all these applications are running in silos within an organization. I may have an ERP, you may have an ERP, but they are not talking to each other. Mm -hmm. So co reconciliation and all those things have to take place. What Oracle can do, what we can do actually is, we can have the, these ERPs application connect through the blockchain with each other. So I have a blockchain network on which my ERP is connected to, your ERP is connected to, and third party ERP is connected to. Now if I make a transaction, all of them have the visibility of what they need to see. Okay. So that actually can reduce all these business processes, uh, transaction time uh, considerably. Okay. So like from days to seconds to minutes and so on. So basically we help thr through the, the blockchain application, we're basically, what I heard you say was that we re remove a lot of the silos so that all of these different, whether they be ERPs or other applications can, can, can can communicate with each other. Right, and we call it like extending the boundaries of the enterprise. Uh -huh. So like uh, the enterprise now doesn't have to be, enterprise application doesn't have to be siloed actually within one organization. It can be the cross business network. It can be distributed. And this blockchain can uh, help the increase the velocity of the business network and okay. interested, interested right. environment. So how does Oracle's blockchain offering differ than what's out there from, uh, I know you compared a little bit with the open source, which obviously isn't enterprise grade and D doesn't have some of the, the, the features that customers would want, but how, how does it, c can you com uh, position it with respect to what's out, uh, out there in the market? Right, so uh, first of all, we are providing this cloud service uh, as a cloud service on Oracle Cloud. So this would be a platform as a service. Okay. So once customer comes, they have actually a blockchain network provision to them. So they don't need to worry about uh, assembling all the components uh, uh, together, like uh, peers and uh, ordering service and consensus algorithm and ledgers and so on. Everything comes pre-assembled to them. Cool. They just click a bu button and they have the blockchain network running. So that way the customers can focus just on the business logic of their transaction, that is creating the smart contract okay. and not worry about any infrastructure detail, the configuration detail and whatsoever. So that's one thing. It allows developers and ISVs, partners, everyone, to start developing the blockchain application and experimentation very quickly. So they can, within minutes, they can start running a blockchain use case, for Got example. It. The second thing is, uh, for developers, again, uh, we provide the REST API-driven development. Okay. So if you go to the open source implementation, all of them have these uh, native APIs uh, uh, there. But REST API is well-known concept, everyone can do that. We have uh -huh. the API management and catalog and all that. You just pick up the API from there and you call the smart contract, business logic and so on. Got so it. again, like very fast to do that. Third thing is the availability and scalability and enterprise. So that's uh, enterprise grade of the blockchain. Mm. So we are really focusing on that, our blockchain service offering that's going to be highly available, zero downtime patching and all those things, as well as highly scalable. So you can have like hundreds of uh, members in a blockchain network as such. Mm -hmm. And the correspondingly increase in the business transaction throughput. Okay. And uh, you can add actually all these members dynamically to the blockchain. Okay, well that's some pretty comprehensive, exciting. So if folks out there want to learn more about blockchain and what Oracle offers, mm -hmm. Can they, is it available now? Is it, uh, or what's, uh, where are things at and how can they get more information about it? So we are in the early adopter program at this point. Okay. Uh, we are working with select partners and customers All who right. have a very specific use case. They want to experiment with it and they want to implement it on our service. So we already have about 10 or 12 customers in the program. Um, so if uh, someone is interested, they can approach us, Oracle, through their account wrap or th through any means. Okay. And uh, we can work with them in getting them the early access version. It's a controlled program, it's a private program. It's only invitation, uh, by invitation only. But there is a lot more information available on oracle.com slash blockchain. So, so uh, oracle.com slash blockchain. That's right. All right. So we have some YouTube video as well uh -huh. on how the, our service works and blog post and so on, all those things. Okay. All right. So off camera, so leaving blockchain aside, you mentioned you're from New Jersey. Yes. I, I don't think I've been there, but should 
I or any of, uh, of the folks want to visit there, what's like one place you would recommend to go and eat or, t or to visit over there? Oh, I'm you have, not you have much a favorite? of a <laughs> eater outside, actually. Okay. I don't go but to the okay. restaurant. But if I go to New Jersey, mm. what would what, what you recommend? Oh, go and visit a Statue of Liberty. That's the, uh, uh -huh. It's in New Jersey. It's not in New York, as people say. It's in New Jersey. It's in New Jersey? Yeah. Are you, are you making a claim here? Officially, it's in I New York, I have never heard it's this. in New Jersey. <laughs> 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 well, folks, you heard this first on Open World 2017. I've never heard that before. <laughs> Deepak, thank you so much for coming and sharing. Thank you, Javed, for thank having you. me here.